Okay, we're gonna start with an excellent session on digital twins to optimize training, recovery, and equipment. Similarly, we found that optimal skeleton for sprinters can increase their speed by 17%. So here, the simulation you're seeing on the screen, the, the, the blue skeleton is optimized for sprinting, and the green skeleton is optimized for marathon running. And you can see that the, the blue uh, skeleton reaches the, the gait cycle earlier than the other two um, sprinters. And we can further ask questions like, what what muscle groups should we focus our training on if we want to improve our sprinting capability? And the answer is we should focus on hamstrings and gastrocnemius because those are involved in hip extension and ankle plantar flexions. And in this uh, simulation, again, you can see the, the, the blue skeleton in the middle. It shows that uh, after the, the, the target muscle training, a generic skeleton can improve its speed by 8%. And these, can, these questions can be answered by the digital twins that we build. Another use case for digital twins is for real-time sensing of human state. Uh, basically, we want to know the 3D pose uh, of the human in real time. And this is easy to do in the lab, right? We can just put sensors on, we have external cameras, but it's really hard to do it in the, in the wild. So we build a digital twins for real-time human esti state estimation using six IMU sensors. So essentially, we want to have a very uh, cheap, lightweight, self-contained uh, motion capture system that, that's not intrusive to our daily life. And here, the video show uh, the, the digital twins uh, on the screen, on the monitor in the videos, is following the uh, real person's movement. Um, and even when a person starts doing things that's completely out of the distribution of the training data, the digital twins can still follow pretty, uh, pretty closely. Uh, the next application I want to show is to use digital twins for motion synthesis. Here we build a digital twin to imitate humans' ability to dance to the music. So if we're given a, a, a data set of a human motion, um, dance, human dance motion, we should have a uh, sound for this video. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So what kind of, can we train a digital twin to, to, to dance to music with a new movement? And the answer is yes. So if we will play a new music to this digital twin, and the digital twin will start dancing with uh, appropriate movements according to the, the beats and rhythms. So here we'll play another music, and the so digital twin will come up with the new movements that's uh, you know, uh, consistent with the rhythm. And we can also do something interesting, right? We can, uh, we, can, we can control the outcome of the motion synthesis by setting constraints. So here the user specify the lower body movements and the upper body movements is completely generated by an AI model. So pretty much our digital twins can dance to any genre of music. So all these digital twins that we build use very different algorithms. They are uh, designed for different applications, but they have one thing in common, which is the large scale data sets they need to train the underlying machine learning models. But these data sets are not, uh, are not perfect, right? For example, the, the, the dancing projects and IMU projects use data set that only contains kinematics motion but no dynamic motion, which means that the models can only learn the, the join, the poses, but not underlying muscle activations or joint torques that give rise to the motion. And for the skeleton prediction project, we only use synthetic data. So what we really want is a large-scale, real human motion data that contains both kinematics and dynamics motion. But how much data do we need? Well, to put things in perspective, Dao Li, the uh, state-of-art AI image generators, needs millions of training data. And for large language model, this is even more extreme, right? Um, by now, you probably all 
try Judge Chat GPT already and impressed by its intelligence or unimpressed by it. Um, but the point here is how much training data do we need to train something like ChatGPT? And it, the answer is 45 terabytes, according to itself. Um, so, so the, yeah. um, so this is a number that's just unfathomable to us because you know when you think about the current human motion data set we have, it's nothing near this. But let's just pause for a moment. Imagine we have. Um, the, the data, we have the same order of magnitude of the data of human motion. Um, can we build amazing, what kind of amazing digital twins we can build that can reach chat GPT level of intelligence? And if we can do something like that, then we can probably predict anything from the outcome of muscle training to sport technique improvements to injury prevention, or we can use digital twins to build better exoskeleton or, or more effective surgical planning. And we can make those digital twins um, generalized to different situations and personalized to individuals, only if we have the data. So let's go back to reality. What kind of data do we have today? So the data set sets tailored to computer graphics, they have a decent amount of data in there, but they don't have dynamics information, like I mentioned earlier. And data sets in biomechanics have dynamic motion, but they have two problems. The first problem is, there's a lot of data being collected in biomechanics, but not shared with the public. And a lot of those private data sets, they tend to be small in size, um, mainly because the uh, intensive labor, uh, labor intensive uh, uh, post-processing. And the second problem is even for those data that are shared with the public, they tend to be highly heterogeneous. Some data sets have upper body, some don't, don't some has e ENG, IMU, or you know, all different kinds of signals, some don't. So we propose a solution called App Biomechanics, um, which can solve both of the problems. And App Biomechanics is a web-based tool to automatically process raw motion capture data to generate accurate digital twin model automatically and their kinematic and dynamics motion. So this is the landscape we're looking at today. We have some public data sets. Uh, for human motion, but there's much more uh, private data sets that are, that are not shared. So app, app biomechanics can expedite the data collection cycle from days to minutes. And this allows researchers to, to capture more data faster and more easily. And because app biomechanics uh, handles the entire data processing uh, pipeline, so the output data are harmonized and, and consistent with machine learning tool chains there. And to promote data sharing, we let everyone use App Biomechanics free of charge in exchange for their consent to donate their data to Publix. So we really believe that you know, with the App Biomechanics, we can harness and aggregate this data collection effort of every lab, every studio, and, and, and build this unprecedentedly large scale uh, data set for human motion. And this is a work, collaborated work with other Wutai faculty like Scott and, and Steve Collins. Here are some qualitative results to visualize to the data we can process. And quantitative results show that uh, app biomechanics can indeed save a lot of experts uh, hours of, of work, effort and produce a better results. We asked our friends and, and, and people we know in biomechanics to try our uh, beta version. So in the last eight months, we have seen rapid growth in user base and, and data being collected. Uh, it's worth noting that we have not uh, done any marketing or advertisement, so we expect even more uh, explosive growth once we formally launch App Biomechanics to public. So if you're intrigued, intrigued uh, you, can, you can go on, on the website and try it. It's really easy to use. Um, we really believe that if we have a place um, that data can be shared, aggregated, and standardized, we can really empower a lot more researchers to use modern machine learning techniques to build more powerful digital twins that can make real impact to people. Thank you. Thank you.